Okay, so we're continuing from the previous video, and right now we have everything working as far as this goes, and we have this little message up here, but really, I kind of want the messages to not necessarily show up here. It all depends on if I'm going to have audio, but this is actually is a good teaching moment where I can have the character say something and have the, the children watch that. So before I start cleaning up anything, I want to go ahead and add an element to this project, and Basically, I'm going to go here to shapes and I'm going to add something like this. So that way when she talks, instead of all the messages showing up and stopping the application, right? So for instance, if I hit F5 and I put this in here, it gives me this great job. But I think it would be better to put it in there instead of it being on the outside. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and name this. And I'll just name this thing Talk. So I'm going to select it going over here to the shapes. And remember, that's in the Format area, Selection Pane. And after you hit the Selection Pane, this will pop up. And you can change that to Talk. And you can change this, the look or whatever, if you want. But I'll keep it the same for now. Now, I I'm going to add some text in here. Because I want to be able to see how it's going to look. So I'm going to select this again. And then I'm going to right click. And then I can go ahead and change any styles that I want. So that way it fits better with the text. And then I'm going to double click on the, the text itself to select all of it. And I'm going to change the size. And then I'm going to go over here and change the font. So something like that looks fine. So now that I have that, I'm going to go now and make that message box in the back. Okay. So what I what I want to do is change this message box here to something that's going to add inside of my talk bubble. So the way I'm going to do that is right inside of this area. I'm going to go ahead and call upon my active presentation slide shapes, that sort of thing. So I'm saying And inside the shapes, I'm going to put talk. All right, so so now when I when I get it right, this should happen. So let's see what happens here. I'm going to. Hit F5, drag it from here, and there it says it right there. I need to change this, this text, but at least I don't have something popping up here in the middle that prevents me from actually um, from experiencing the game without having to click a, an OK button. Maybe that's OK when, you, you know, when the game is over and you want to do something, but normally you don't want something stopping the game like that unless it's completely intentional and you're going to finalize something. So this looks good, what we have right here. If I do something like this, it's going to pop right back to its original position where I started from. So so now I need something down here. And this right here is if uh, it was not, if it did not uh, go in the right area. So up here is when I got it. And right here is when I did not get it. So this should say, Try again, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in this same shape here, here, but it's not going to say got it, it's going to say sorry, try again. All right. 
try this out. Sorry, try again. Now it's popping back in there because I never reset this. So that'll be another thing that I will have to do is make sure all these reset when I first start, when I reset the game. So when I run the game, it's always going to, when I don't get it right, it's going to say, sorry, try again. It's going to pop back here. But if I get it right, it's going to sit there and this is going to say, got it, great job. And then I just go back and set it over here. But I should do this in code later on. The next thing I want to do is remove any any respect to these right here. So this position and this position in. So I'm going to go back into the code and I'm going to remove this position and this position in because I don't really need to see this test anymore. So I'm going to take those out and then I am going to push these over. Now I could literally just leave it in code but normally I would just delete it. I'm just leaving it here uh, in case I may need it later. So in the next bit of cleanup I want to do is over here inside of this one right here. So this right here, every time I put it in, it's looking for inside of this red, this square right here, is looking for the red square. Well, actually, I don't want to look for a square in particular. I want to start organizing this so where it'll work for any shape because I'm thinking we're going to have to make more shapes here obviously. So really what I'm going to want to do is take the current shape that I have selected regardless of the name and put that inside of this and I'm, we're going to change this later but for now that's what we want to do and then I'm going to go try that out at 5 and everything still works exactly the same. Sorry try again Got it. Great job. Now the next thing I want to do is take this SQR black in position. And I want to change this to object black and object red. So that way, or object color. So that way it could be any shape that I want. I don't have to keep remaking this for each shape. So I'm going to write, I'm going to double click on that. And so I'm going to hit control F and then this is going to pop up and I'm going to hit replace and what I want to replace this with is OBJ black and I could start put OBJ start or end and I think that might be better so if I put OBJ end so that's this is going to be the object that's that you you know you the ending point object like the black silhouette uh, part so it may be black and maybe some other color but we'll just keep it like this in case um, we change that and I'm gonna hit uh, change all uh, replace all and it's going to tell me how many was replaced the next one I want to replace is this red one so I'm going to put that in there and then I'm going to change this to object start. So it's a start object and I'm going to hit replace all and I should get about five. Of, yeah, okay, so there we go, about five of those. Hit okay. Now with those changes, it still should all work and but we're still I mean, we still have a few more things to do, but it looks like we are closer and closer to actually making this work to where it doesn't really matter what object we we put in. Um, the only thing we need to change here is uh, this end here. So it says end square. So basically, I need to pull that end square depending on the name itself, depending on the name of the object that I'm getting. And we'll talk about that in a second. But let's see if this works. Hit F5. It's going to pop back because I started it in the black. There we go. And there's my message. Let me replace this so I can see it all work right. F5. And there's the got it message. Perfect. Everything still works. 
if you notice what I'm doing, every time I make some significant change, what I do is I run the application, even though I know that's supposed to work, because I'm just refactoring, I'm just changing some names around. But a lot of times you might change something that you didn't really mean to change or mistype something, and at least you are at the point of contact for that error. And you kind of want to do that all the time. So here's what I'm thinking we should be able to do. For every object that we're selecting down here, it has a standard name. And on all those standard names, they'll have something like an underscore n to it. So we can separate the end by knowing where it needs to go. Okay. So if I select this square, I already know it needs to go to square end, which means all I need to do is parse or add the letter, the word end to anything to know where it's going. With that said, in my code, let me first do a test and see if I can get the name of the object that's selected. And I'll be getting that through this here. So I'm going to do a MSG box just as a test. And I'm going to put that there and I'm going to put dot name. So I should get the name of the object selected. I'm gonna hit um, get back here, hit F5. And there's the name. I did get the square. Good. So now all I need to say is from here. So I want to take this object name. And I'm going to say dem the end the object underscore end as a string. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and put that up here at the top. So now I'm going to take this object end and it's going to equal the selected uh, shape and it's going to equal the name. But it's also going to be equal plus underscore end. So now, whenever I click an object, I should be able to see where it should go. So let me put a message box to make sure that this is the case. Square end is where it should go, and that is correct. So now what we want to be able to do is test this out. I'm going to remove this message box. But I, I do want this object end here. And I want to replace that with this here. So instead of square end, I'm going to replace with object end. Now this still should work, okay? So if it doesn't work, we know where the error is. So I'm going to hit F5 here, and we should get sorry, correct, and it pops back, and then we should get correct. Yes, we got it. So now we have this thing anonymous. It really doesn't care what object we use. It's going to know what end to put it on as long as we name it properly. All right, so now it looks like we can go ahead and add ourselves another shape. After we are done with all of this, let me just check the code. Everything looks right. And everything looks like it'll work no matter what shape I put in there. All right, so let's go ahead and try to add ourselves another shape. But I think we should do that in the next video. This video is already 60 minutes. I'll see you guys next time.